Nomading Skyrim could be freaking scary. So welcome to the perfect video for you. And that applies mainly if you're starting modding for the first time right now, or if you modded a while in the past and now you're completely confused because the environment has changed a lot. But also if you're a modding veteran, these tips might actually prove pretty helpful to you, so stick around. The first tip I would have for everyone is to check and choose the right Skyrim version for you. You gotta make sure that you'd launch Skyrim at least once without any mods to just to generate all the files that you need and then you go to the file location which is in this PC, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common and Skyrim Special Edition and then you find this Skyrim SE, not the one that says launcher, this one. You right click on it and select properties and then you go to the details tab and you see the version right here. What you want to pay attention to is whether you have version 1.5.97 or 1.6. something. 1.5 is special edition and 1.6 is anniversary edition. You'll notice that I have 1.5.97 and that's because a few mods that I use are still not updated for the anniversary edition and a lot of new mods still are coming out with SE compatibility. This might change in the future and you should decide for yourself what version you want based on what mods there are available. Every now and then Bethesda just shadow drops a version out of nowhere and it just breaks the game and it makes you want to break your computer. Most of you though will probably have automatic updates enabled and you're probably on AE. However, if you do want to downgrade, manually download the patcher that I linked in the description, open the program and click start patching. If it didn't find your game automatically, just click on the path here and go back to where we went to check the version, that being this PC, program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, and Skyrim Special Edition. And then you click on Skyrim SE. Tip number two is selecting the right mod manager for you. Before you start modding, I will tell you that you should never under any circumstances tell yourself that you got this and download and install mods manually. You don't got this. There are mods that you'll have to do that with, like ENBs for example, but for most of your mods, use a mod manager. So most of your mods will be downloaded from the Nexus, so you go to this website, Nexus Mods, and make sure you're going to Skyrim Special Edition, not just simply Skyrim. And even if you're running on Anniversary Edition, that's just another version of Special Edition. That being said, there are two main mod managers. There's Vortex, or previously called Nexus Mod Manager, and Mod Organizer 2. And while most people will tell you that MO2 is better, I would say that it depends. While yes, it is better in almost every way possible, if you know how to use it, you gotta state your modding goals first. If you wanna play Skyrim with only a few mods that add fixes, some textures, and maybe a few armor and weapon mods, I would say Vortex is your go-to. But if you're planning to completely overhaul your game, don't even look at Vortex and just cross the bridge to MO2 directly. Vortex is great, but when you go into the detail of things, it actually gets more confusing and difficult to use than MO2. There will be a tutorial by Gamer Poets, the Messiah of Skyrim modding, right in the description on how to start with MO2 if you need it. Tip number three is to always, always read the mod page. Listen, there's nothing more tedious than to read things on the internet, I would know, but it's very important to read the mod page just so you know what's going on. So let me show you the most important parts of a mod page. First of all, we have the requirements tab. Most of the time, if a mod requires another mod, you'll be able to see it here and download it. Or if you have other mods that change the same area, for example, or change similar things, you will have patches and you'll be able to find the patches here. Not always, but it's very convenient when there are there. Let's use Capital Whiterun Expansion as an example, a mod that makes Whiterun bigger. If you look at the requirements tab, you'll see that there's Blobo's Whiterun patch. And if you have the Blobo's Whiterun mod, a mod that adds trees to Whiterun, like I do, you will have to download this, otherwise you'll have floating trees and trees sticking out of buildings which look stupid. So the more you do it, the more you read the mod page, the more you know where to find things. Another benefit of reading the mod page is that if the mod adds an item for example, you'll see how to acquire it and not look like a jackass in the comments asking where to find it. Basically, it provides instructions to play with the mod in the right way. Number 4. Always check your plugins and make sure they're in the right order. You gotta make sure that the plugins are in the right order in the plugins tab, not only in the mods tab. Let me show you an example. 
I have the Cities of the North Falkreath mod, which I will eventually make a video about, but I also have mods changing the terrain around Falkreath. And if I override the Cities of the North mod with other terrain mods, the terrain in the city will be completely messed up. But by putting Cities of the North at the absolute bottom, or at least below the mods that change the terrain, Cities of the North will override that instead and it will take priority. You can also use Loot, which is a tool that organizes your plugins for you. It's not perfect, but it does help in most situations. And if you need a tutorial on how to use it, I have a link in the description to a video by Gamer Poets. So if there's one thing you should take from this section is that if you encounter a problem, just assume it's your plugins first and then you do the troubleshooting. Number 5 would be to rename your mods for a better organization. And I actually only recently started doing this. If you have a lot of mods, it's super easy to forget what each does and what areas it changes. What I do now is that in MO2, I click rename on the mod and I add a short description of a few words right in front of the name. For example, I have this cluster of white run mods and I can easily identify them now. Names of mods are not always intuitive. For example, there's Vaadin, and I totally forgot what this was after I installed it. If you ever forget what a mod does, you can easily go to the mod page directly from MO2 by right clicking on the mod and just clicking on visit on Nexus. Now I see that it's a hair replacer, so I'll just rename it to add hair replacer right in front. Number 6 would be to give yourself a rule to only download a few mods at a time. So if you download mods that change a specific area, travel to that area and walk around a little bit just to see how stable it is. Just play around with the mods that you installed lately and don't install too many at once because if you do encounter a problem, you won't know what mod caused that problem, so it's gonna be a lot harder for you. This should be intuitive, especially if you have an empty list and you want to fill it up as fast as you can. You might be tempted to install everything and then run your game, but don't do that. Also, before installing those 10 or so mods, you should really back up your saves, your game files, and your mod list, just in case. In MO2, you can back up your list automatically by clicking this button. And if you want to restore it, if you need, just click the button right next to it. And number 7, pretty weird, but watch Skyrim YouTubers. Not only do they show off cool new mods or lists or guides, but they also make modding look fun. And modding is often a very daunting hobby, let's be honest, even if it's very fun. By watching YouTube videos on mods, you can also pick up new techniques or simply understand the lingo of modding, which is very helpful if you read mod pages. And by being part of the community, you would feel less lonely when you ultimately break your game and ruin your life. Not to be that guy, but this is probably the best way to tell you to, that if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Now, if you're starting out modding, I really recommend that you check out my must-have mods in which I show the mods that I really cannot play without now, that I believe that should have been included in vanilla. And if you want to make your game look like mine, check out this video in which I showcase the visual mods that I have. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one. Now click on either one of those and get out of here.